Hello, I'm James Honk Honk Morrow, and this week on Busting the Narrative, when is a protest an act of sedition? The last two weeks have given the world incredible scenes out of Canada as truck drivers formed record-breaking convoys to protest not only that country's vaccine mandates and passports, but job-killing lockdowns and a host of other freedom-busting restrictions. These Polish-Canadian women bringing food to the protesters summed it up well. We stand behind them. We come from communist country and we came here because we didn't want to have oppression. We wanted to live in a free country. And for the last two years, we're living like prisoners. We are being told to stay at home. Uh, we're told not to go to the restaurant, not to go to the church. I mean, this is unbelievable. During communism times, we were able and free to go to the church. And there were times over here where, where we couldn't. It's a protest unlike anything we have seen anywhere in the world because it has been just about entirely peaceful. And yet, it is also being entirely demonized. Now, no matter what you think about vaccines, and before anyone goes calling me an anti-vaxxer, I am a triple-jabbed Omicron survivor who thinks everyone should make the call freely about what is right for them. The fact is, these protests have been about a lot more than just the needle. In Ottawa, Canada's capital city, officials are making it a crime. Yes, a crime to bring food or fuel to the protesters, hoping to starve or freeze them out of the city and its bitterly cold winter temperatures. More than that, while Canada's village people prime minister has gone into hiding, purportedly with COVID, but for far longer than the official isolation period, Canada's great and good have come out to trash the protesters. Canada's former Reserve Bank governor, Mark Carney, has gone so far as to accuse the protesters of sedition in the Globe and Mail newspaper. This is, of course, the same Globe and Mail which, during the Black Lives Matter protests, nearly choked on their poutine, giving good press to the movement, including this story about a bilingual French-English rally in 2020 as the pandemic raged. And while it was perfectly okay for small business owners in the U.S. to have their life's work burned to the ground to honor the memory of George Floyd, the precious mental health of Ottawa residents is now apparently at risk because some truckers are blowing their horns. Reports the Globe and Mail, quote, people in the city are dealing with the emotional and mental toll of a protest that has occupied downtown Ottawa over the past week as trucks blare their horns at all hours, streets are blocked by large vehicles, and some even report physical and verbal abuse from protesters. Experts, and what would we do without experts, worry that the stress could have long-lasting effects on the health of residents who have also been navigating life during a pandemic. I'm so sorry, guys. Having your lockdown interrupted by freedom must be such a tragedy. But isn't it more tragic to aggressively handcuff and arrest an elderly man? What are you doing? Really? What are you doing? Really? Hey! Hey! That's assault! That's assault! I've got it all on video. It's the same thing elsewhere. The same Washington Post that once glorified 2020's riots now calls for the dehumanization of the truck protests, which they call toxic. Trudeau himself joined the pile on from his secret bunker, accusing the protesters of being hateful. Freedom of expression, assembly, and association are cornerstones of democracy. But Nazi symbolism, racist imagery, and desecration of war memorials are not. It is an insult to memory and truth. Hate can never be the answer. But the tide seems to be turning. Trudeau's misrepresentation of the protesters was called out by Joel Lightbound, a member of his own party. I've seen on Radio-Canada an interview with what seemed to be a very kind gran grandmother who demonstrated for her grandkids. She looked and sounded nothing like a white supremacist. Nor did the black, Sikh and indigenous Canadians I saw demonstrating on my way to Parliament these last two weeks or in Quebec City this last Saturday. I have enough respect for my fellow Canadians not to engage in these easy and absurd labels. Lightbound also called for the protesters in Ottawa to disband and for the nation to reunite and move forward together. Ordinary Canadians agree. 
I'm a black man standing beside my brother right here. This is my brother That's right. right here. Yes, and none of you have the right to tell me who to associate with. Are the protesters winning? In Alberta, a vaccination passport system expires tonight after the provincial premier said it was time to, quote, move on from a widespread pandemic response to get our lives back to normal. But the mainstream media remains strangely less interested in the fraternalism and achievements of the protesters. But what else do we expect? The same media that told us that Trump was a Russian agent, that told us Hunter Biden was not a world-class crackhead, was instead an oil and gas expert worth tens of thousands of dollars a month to a Ukrainian energy firm. The same media that told us Jesse Smollett was a victim and that Brett Kavanaugh was a rapist. And the same media that tells us female athletes who were born and went through puberty as males have no advantage over their competitors. And on and on. Almost as a matter of course, one has to have sympathy with the truckers, not just because they stand for freedom, but because, well, the people heaping so much condemnation on them have been proven to be liars time and time again. Thanks for watching and to support this channel, please like, share, and subscribe below. And we'll see you next week for more Busting the Narrative.